Uh, I've only used this twice, so God knows what's going to happen, what, how it's going to translate. But if anyone's aware of this technology, what you can do is scan it. And if anyone's got, has a different language, first language, so if you're Italian or French or Welsh, it will translate uh, what I'm saying. As you can see at the top of the screen, um, it will translate what I'm saying and put it into your first language. And also you can save the script and take it away with you. I wouldn't know why you do that, but you can. Um, so have you got that? Okay, this is one of the Microsoft um, tools. And um, it, will, it sort of like uh, sets me off in uh, on one of my passions is I use technology. So first of all, I'm uh, Deborah Miller. I'm the group director for digital technology at Grimsby College. I'm new there. I've only been there since um, February. Uh, for the majority of my life, I have been a teacher, and so I, I have not always been in management and doing strategic things. I actually love teaching. I'm very passionate about it. And, and the reason that I use technology, I'm just watching what it's translating here. It's actually doing quite well. Um, um, so um, I'm very passionate about using technology for a, a, a number of reasons. Uh, and, and the main reason is about accessibility, inclusion, making sure that my learners can actually access the content that I'm talking about. So um, back in 1990s, I know that was a previous world, but I started using Moodle and uh, I didn't know what it was, I didn't want to do it, I hated it, but I was running a degree course and uh, for strange reasons, my, uh, my mentor was promoted, uh, somebody else uh, unfortunately uh, got a, a, a long-term sickness, and two other people got pregnant, there was something in the water. And I was left running a degree program virtually on my own, a large degree program. And uh, I thought, okay, this Moodle thing, this Moodle Moodle thing might help me out. And so I, I just embraced it. And I said to my learners, my first years, I said, look, you know, I'm going to try this thing out. Um, I don't know how it's going to go. And I spent a lot of time. I invest, invested lots of time in the evening doing this technology stuff. And I'd go in and they'd go, so, what do you think? And they'd be like, okay, yeah, that's quite good. Because a lot of them were parents and uh, they couldn't always study. They, were, they, had, you know, they had things going on in their lives. So, you know, you're sat here, some of you will be hungover, some of you will have had an argument with someone, some of you will have a migraine. You might not be taking in what I'm saying right now, but hopefully at some point you can take away that information and stay, because actually you're a good person and you want to learn. And that's how I found my learners. So um, I, I embraced this technology and they started saying, look, don't take this away, this is actually helping us. And um, we were a small university and... Um, from that four years that I was running that course, I got a quarter of my students to achieve a first-class degree. And I was like, wow, this is like crazy. I'm not that good. There's something going on here. And I, 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 I can't prove it. I do think it was the technology, but I can't prove it. And, uh, and four years, we were winning international competitions. I was getting guest speakers from industry coming in. And, and it was like, wow, this is amazing. Uh, and, and, and then I went and did my uh, MA in education and the first year, you know, you do your action research and I did it on using technology. I was literally one of the very few that was using technology in the university centre and I couldn't understand why I was the only person. They were, the only other geeks that were using it were from computing and I was this random person from design doing this stuff. And I got all my team using it because the students were like, oh, Deb does it this way. Oh, Deb does this. And they were like, oh. So they started, I was a program leader, so I said, look, you know, let's become paper free. Let's, let's take our students on this journey. Let's do the technology that they'll be using in industry. And the students said to me, we don't like that thing that you did last week, but we found an alternative. Can we use Tumblr instead? Or can we use Twitter? Or can we use this? And I'm like, okay, right, okay. So it was a, it was a conversation thing. And I just want to say, Jane, where are you? I actually don't know Jane, who's just presented before, okay? But you are refreshing. It is so good to have people like you, because what I tend to do is come to events like this, and I preach to the converted, 
we, you put your hands up, most of you will be delivering t um, uh, digital, uh, you'll be learning technology, so something in that field. And, and you are a, a refreshing change because communication is key and you make that happen at your university because you're a teacher and you see how, it, and you work with your students. It's about communication, isn't it? And that's why, that's why I was sat there going, oh my God, this girl's got it right. She's doing some incredible stuff. And that is because of your communication and your commitment and passion. It, it's not me that leads stuff like this. It's people like you. And, and what I tend to find is that people focus on students. And my, my principal says, um, I've I'm I'm not even moved slides yet, have I? Um, and, and my principal <laughs> says it's uh, students, for, um, students first, staff always. I like that phrase because I focus on staff because it's when you get wonderful people like Jane embracing the technology, they go in with this gusto and this passion and they convert the learners and they want to do that. It's not about forcing and forcing people to do things. It's about, okay, I can see a win here and this is why I can see a win and I'm going to make my student the most desirable uh, graduate possible because they're going to come out and they're going to be Microsoft experts when they come out. Not only are they going to have a degree in this, but they're going to have these qualifications. I need water, please. So, going back, um, I, I was working with the students and getting all this kind of like, all these uh, international golds and silvers and these first classes. And I was like, wow, this is great. And, uh, and I did the MA and, uh, and then I suddenly, there's a post advertised for head of e-learning and I went for it. <laughs> Crazy, I got it. And uh, I converted the uh, HC department into using Moodle and, and started enc encouraging them to use different technologies. And then they said, well, will you do this for the whole college? I was like, okay. So I was doing it for FE and HC. And then I was new in the post and they said, can you go and talk to some staff and tell them what you're gonna do? Oh yeah, communication, that's important. So I went to this hotel and we had all the staff gathered, there were more than you. It was one department. And I stood up and I did my thing. And like you can see, I'm quite smiley. And uh, everyone was like <laughs> smiling back at me. And I, I got off this. And I was like, oh yeah, Tumblr and Pinterest and Twitter and Moodle. And they're like, yeah, yeah. And I got off the stage. And I thought to myself inside, oh yeah, I did it. I'll look at it. And I went to the ladies, and I was in the cubicle, and two women came in, and uh, one said to the other, well, I've no idea what that woman was talking about. <laughs> and I thought, hmm, okay, right, shall I hide and, and, and just cry, or shall I go out and confront them? So I went out and I confronted them in a gentle, lovely way. And... Um, I said, what's, what's the problem? And, we said, and they, said, they said, it's not that we don't want to do what you're talking about. We just don't know what you, those words are. We don't get it. So I realized it was a communication problem. We're in that industry. We use Pinterest and Tumblr and Mentimeter and all of that. And it's just, it's just the, the terminology that we use. We take it for granted that staff get it, but they don't. They don't get it at all. And so that's where my, my learning wheel happened. I realized, because I was working with Sarah and other people, I was going out to events, that there wasn't just my staff experiencing <laughs> this. There were other staff uh, experiencing I haven't actually started my timer, so somebody's going to have to tell me how I'm doing on time. So um, I was climbing a mountain. I had a little bit of an epiphany. And I thought, right, all this strategy stuff, it's all right, but nobody reads it. You write it. Somebody reads it, who's your line manager or something, they approve it, and then it goes in a drawer. Well, oh, that was back in the day, okay? Uh, but actually, um, it's slightly different now, but I thought, oh, who's going to be bought? teaching staff? They're too busy. I need to do something different. And so I thought, right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create something that's color-coded and really short and sweet. And I'm going to do it based on pedagogy. And so I was reading and going to all these events and listening to Ofsted and listening to HEA and on all, on all these people, and I came up with this learning wheel. So the learning wheel, first slide, 
<laughs> is, is all about the connected learner. It puts the learner at the centre. And what we do, we deliver content, we transmit information, we are the sta sage on the stage. But it shouldn't always be like that, should it? Because look at you, you're really bored, aren't you? Do you know what? <laughs> you, know, you need some stimulation, you need to be doing things. And that, that, you know. So um, there is a point where I have to provide information as, a, as your knowledgeable person up front. But at some point, we need some kind of assessment process and some communication going on. So it isn't just you and I talking and staff and students. It should be you and you as students talking. But also, it should be externals. So this, this learning wheel has enabled me to get externals to mark my students' work, to feed back on the work. And how empowering is that, that technology can allow designers to comment on my students work and uh, and also my graduates have done like Twitter we do like Twitter sessions so I go okay you're my student you've left me okay you're working in this really cool uh, design agency in London but I can't afford to bring them down do us a fave can you just walk around your uh, studio film everybody you know who's who what's your role what's your role what are your responsibilities show us a bit of work so they send the film on Twitter and then my students meet up and we ask the, uh, the people questions and it was like, it was, and we had people doing uh, what we call them Twitter trilogies. So in an hour we had three illustrators come online from all over the world and do talks and then we'd follow it up with a hashtag where we ask questions. So it was really kind of like exciting. I was like, mm, this is amazing. Wow, well, I haven't even started. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the world is changing and um, what I find is that uh, our curriculum and this is not Grimsby, this is not Blackburn or Salford where I've worked in general I find that our, our curriculum is not preparing our learners for what's actually out there we aren't teaching them how to use drones Drones are surveying and, and, you know, we're still teaching people how to build and to create, but yet there's the semi-automated mason that actually builds for you. And you look at all the new technology at the moment and it's like, okay, are we actually preparing our learners for this? You know, they're doing surgery uh, from America on people in France and, again, are our students prepared for this? 96% um, of our learners are on a smartphone. Uh, 34 hours are spent online between 16 and 24 year olds. That's how much time they spend online. Thank you, Sarah. This is your information. And 48% um, access their VLE from a mobile uh, phone. Okay. Are we taking advantage of that? Okay, so um, this, is, this, is, this is what I saw. You, this is a teacher, a technophobe. They're in the staff room. They're prepping for the next lesson they overhear a conversation. So someone so says, hey, I'm going to embed the scoop it onto level three sport VLE. And, and the other person says, great, uh, uh, put it below the uh, induction prezi. And this is the language that we use. But a technophobe is like, I have no idea what they're talking about. And, and then she, she sa she's like, oh, where are the photos from, from the field trip? And the technophile says, they're in the cloud scary. Um, even more confusing, everyone around is twittering on about Pinteresting, how Pinteresting Ted is, whoever he is. Uh, again, that's your technophobe. So the learning wheel was developed. Um, essentially a model of, um, it's a, a visual tool to communicate um, what you, so what's your subject? Uh, oh, sorry, I'm picking on you. Strategy. Strategy. Oh, gosh. What's yours? <laughs> okay, okay, somebody's an accountant, all right? I don't know anything about accountancy. Let me just skip and show you. So this is a resource wheel. My team created a resource wheel. So this one's about Twitter. So how do we use Twitter to communicate information? How do we use Twitter to assess our students? How do we use Twitter to communicate and also to collaborate? So it started off resource specific, Twitter, blend space, QR codes. <coughs> then it got a little bit more exciting. Um, these are some of the, so these are what I call spokes. This, this is very, very analog at this stage. 
but um, the beast has grown. Uh, when I first launched this, I was doing it for a project, and I, I had to, uh, when I put it online, I had to kind of track how many people were using it, and I had a 10.2 million retweet reach, and uh, it was in 46 countries. I was like, ooh, <laughs> that's interesting. Um, since then, there's been a book written on it, and, uh, and now, it, it, has anyone read Harry Potter? You know the dog with three heads that, like, is really scary? Well, that's the learning wheel. It used to be a really cute and fluffy thing that I used to, like, go home and play with at weekends and in the evenings. Now it's like this beast that I just shut the door on and run away from. At the moment, I need to make it more automated, so I'm going in for a bid with the UFI to try and get it more automated. But, I, you know, I give people ideas. This, this, this is written by uh, staff for staff. So I talked about the accountants. So how do accountants use technology in these areas? Because I'm not an accountant, so I can't tell you. I'm not a historian. I'm not a social uh, worker or anything like that. So I was getting all these people from all over the world writing these short spokes. And then I was citing them and referencing. And, and so everybody had their, 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 their spokes published. Oh, wrong slide. So uh, it grew. And then I started looking at subjects. So now I've I had the resource wheels. And now I've got hairdressing, and I think I've got about 50 subject wheels. There's a research meths one that's really popular. Um, and, and I, I saw stuff like this making a difference in class. So I know it's to you, add, add, less, uh, add depth to your lessons. Like get, your, get your learners to, to follow Weller Education. It's a given to us. We get it. We get hashtags. Staff don't always. So this was like really making it short and simple and colour coded. I am being really random, aren't I? So uh, recently I launched the interactive one. So not only is the Learning Wheel live, so if you would go to learningwheel.co.uk, on the first tab it's called live. And now what you can do is if you're a account, an audio visual technician, so if you wanted to be a captain of a wheel, because you're a specialist, not I, you can, you can actually leave that wheel and tweet it out to your audio-visual people on your hashtags that you know about, to your colleagues. They all come in and say, this is how we use technology to convert our staff or our, our students. But you can also not only just write spokes now, you can put a, a, a video or a PDF or a link to things that you've prepared to show you, who's really new to teaching, in audiovisual, how to actually do what you're doing. So there's, there's far more that I can do with this, but right now, like I say, it's the three-headed monster in the corner. And that's the captain thing. You can read all about this on their website. Um, so I had uh, Anne Gravel, or Anne Gravels, uh, who's led one. I don't know whether you know Anne Gravels, but she's a, an educator. She writes about um, um, training staff and teachers. So she's had her own education and training wheel, so she got people to come in. in. I do have a Microsoft one, where's Andy? Uh, just so it, somebody's leading that one. I've got a flipped learning one. I've got a level six. So I've got resource wheels. I've got subject specific wheels. I've also got conference wheels. And now it's got down to the point where people are saying, can I have a level specific one or a module one? So if you're teaching module one, two, three, on this particular course, and you're teaching module one, two, three, you can actually collaborate and share what resources, because I don't feel, I feel this amazing pressure to help people, but why should I just help people at my college? I want to help everyone, and we should all be doing that. How are we doing for time? Shall I stop? Three, three four minutes. Mm -hmm. So, um, let me talk about impact of the, the wheel. So uh, I challenged the sport department two colleges ago to get with Twitter uh, because I could see these advantages. I worked with 12 individuals from various levels, from level two, one, two, right up to six, and, uh, and the varying skills, comp you know, digital literacy skills. And... Um, I worked with them uh, and I said, right, okay, let me look at your scheme of work. And then what I did is I had DigiPals, who were student ambassadors, and DigiPals, who were staff ambassadors, come together and 
digitize, kind of look at the scheme of work and say, how can we make this more digital and more engaging? So we rewrote a scheme of work for 12 staff. And the st one of the staff who's from sport is like, oh, I I'm nearly, I'm near retirement. I really, you know, I don't know whether I can do all this. I don't get this technology. So we introduced him to, uh, uh, what's the interactive um, poster we can put videos on? Come on. No, oh gosh, is it? It's an interactive poster. But it Oh, you're so good. Look at you talking to speak. Um, I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, I, it's not any of those. So, um, but these learners were normally drawing on coloured pieces of paper with pencils and felt tips that had run out. They were in sport. They weren't in art, so that frustrated me because they haven't got the skills. And really, nobody was marking the poster for what it looked like. They were marking the content. So I said, well, why are you doing, why are you spending hours right? designing posters is not about the poster it's about the content let's use this tool I can't remember it I'll, I'll shout <laughs> if I shout a word later it'll be the tool um, and so so the students started using this and one had learning difficulties he had a support worker and he went in the class and um, for the first time it was only level two or level one level two had lots of issues, ADHD, dyslexia, um, nobody could manage him. He was lovely though. And he, he for the first time, I'm going to go goosebumpy, this actually brings tears to my eyes, for the first time, he met a deadline prior to the, de to the deadline. He also got a merit first sit. That is goosebump stuff, isn't it? That, like, I've got it all over me and I talk about this all the time. How cool is that? If you can change a learner's life, you can make them interested in a subject by using technology, that is like awesome. And, and, and this, this member of staff who didn't want to use technology, all he had to do was to learn how to like and share and retweet the work. And, and another learner came in and he wasn't great either, normally, apparently, uh, but he had 93 views on this interactive poster before he even submitted it. 93, because it was in the cloud, 93 views, hearts. That's the difference that people who use technology can have on a learner. And that's why I'm really passionate about it. And that's why I don't just want to tell you about it, or you, or you, or you. I want the whole world to be using technology. And I know it's scary stuff, but it's also incredible stuff. Um, I'm fortunate enough to work at Grimsby, we're an outstanding college and we have a system that we've just won an AOC award for, it's called Level Up. So our staff have badges to achieve. Uh, we, you can see, they're actual physical badges but I'm going to make them virtual as well. So our staff are now um, coming to sessions and saying, we don't mandate this, so you might come to me and say, oh, I'm really struggling with assessment or I'm really struggling with engaging my learners out of lesson. How am I going to do that? Can we have a conversation? So we have that conversation. We'll talk about maybe what resource you can use. You go and have a go with it, and you go, oh. and you can ask us to come and watch if you want, if you're struggling. And then what happens is you reflect on that. What, what benefits has that brought to you? And also, give me a screen grab of the thing you've done and get me some feedback from your participants, your users. And then what we do, we photograph that and we put it on Yammer and we post it out to all staff. So it builds this momentum up. And if you uh, do all of that, so you can see here I photographed this member of staff. She's got her Innovate Silver um, and she had to, to learn some things for that. And uh, we share it out and people go, oh, I, I want to have a go. That's what I've been trying to do because they can see a photo and they can see the feedback from the students. They're like, well, that sounds good. Can I have a go? It, it's, it's simple. It's really simple, but it's working. So I, as you can see, um, I, I tweeted there, Feel Good Friday brings Ali Riley uh, galloping to my office to claim her first Level Up Silver Award. Kahoot for her spray production enthused her students and contributed to her outstanding lesson observation. You could be, uh, you should be proud. So those are our teachers. And then somebody else there. So we've, we've got lots. Of, I actually taught the um, principal last week and tomorrow 
and doing a social media level up where she's learning how to use Scoop It because I've taught her some other stuff but rather than keep using LinkedIn or Twitter or something, I said if you use, Twi if you use Scoop It, you can do it and it goes out to all your networks. So I'm trying to save her time now. So, you, you know, anyhow, that's me. Thank you very much. Any questions? Okay. <laughs> no? Any questions? Did I see? No, you just want Any lunch, hands? don't you? Do you yeah, that's it. Anybody? Oh, Sarah. Oh, Sarah. <laughs> Dave, I think what comes through is your real passion and enthusiasm. And, you know, I think everyone in the room, you know, sort of shares that vision for wanting to make a difference. And how do we start mobilizing more of this passion and this enthusiasm so that we can sort of spread the word more? Because you know, we know that the people in the room will go back into their institutions and do the work that they're doing. But how do we really get sort of shift that change so we're not sitting here saying, this is what we have to do. Everyone just says, well, we're doing it. I, I think we clone Jane. Uh, for starters, mm -hmm. but um, I, I think it's it, it's uh, having various baits. So first of all, you have to make sure that everyone's on site. So my principal comes to, we call it the Moss Dos on Thursday evening, where she's doing uh, one of her Microsoft Office. Uh, that encourages other people to come. I think the strategy has to be um, communicated very well to everyone and everybody needs to be on site. I think you have to be positive and supportive rather than mandated and you've got to do this. You've got to understand, I mean, I'm, I'm preaching to the converted here, but you have to understand where your staff are at. You know, I know that you're really cool and on it like a car bonnet, but you are saying to me, I haven't got this time, I haven't got this. And actually, when it comes down to it, if I go and sit and talk to you quietly on a one-to-one, -one, it's actually because you're scared. And, and that's fine. I try and get staff to confess what it actually is. And I'll say, look, OK, you're scared. Or, but how can I help you? Do I need to save you time? Do I need to get your students more engaged? Do I need to increase or improve your retention or your achievement? Tell me what it is that I need to do for you. And then I'll find a tool, and we'll work together. And I'll hold your hand whilst teaching you how to do that. And let's see if it makes an, in, a, an impact. And uh, uh, there's various. You know, you've got to find the right bait for the right individual and find out why they're not playing ball. Are there any other questions? <sighs> no. <laughs>